My name is Nikki Wazova. I am a hair artist. I do artistic hairstyles, head pieces, and hair tapestry artwork. I'm from Soweto in South Africa. My earliest artistic memory was, I think I was eight, nine. Um, I used to like drawing cartoons from magazines and newspapers. Um, I think I used to do that when I was bored. Uh, I used to find that interesting, but I didn't take it seriously. I don't, I didn't think it was really anything, you know, to write home about. And then as years went by, I got interested into fashion. Uh, a lot of people don't think fashion is art, but it is art. Uh, I think when I got submitted in university, when now I got to draw something and actually make it, that's when I got into art. And I think at that time I was like, what, 1920? My creative process differs uh, because I, I, I feel like I freestyle most of the time. And most of, my, uh, most of the time I experiment with new techniques, but I would start by tracing out an idea, whether it's from a photograph or it's the idea that I have in my head. Uh, I will trace it on a linen canvas. And then from there on, depending if I'm going to braid or I'm going to use an Afro textured hair extension, um, then I would just color in or stitch the artistic drawing with hair extensions. If I'm braiding, I would ask people to help me with the braiding to make the process real quick. And then I would stitch the braids together, just following the outline of the drawing. Um, and then from there on, then I will decide if I want to put it on a weaved canvas. Um, by weaved canvas, I mean like braids to weave together or uh, I would put it uh, on an acrylic canvas so I would paint the canvas into any color that I want and then I would take whatever that I've stitched put it onto the weave canvas or onto the acrylic canvas I'm still trying to figure out the process because I decide as I go so as I go I will try and make my process real quick like if I have um, an acrylic canvas next time, what I'll do is that I'll just paint the canvas and then stitch on top of it instead of just doing it on a separate canvas. So after doing that, then I will stitch the edges onto the weave canvas or acrylic canvas. And then I will just trim the hair and uh, just make sure that everything is flat. Yeah, that's it. That's one of the yeah, processes that I use and the techniques that I use, the weaving technique uh, is the embroidery technique where I use the needle and thread. It's basically creating like a, a weaving method, but with a needle and thread. Those are my main techniques that I use. My artistic style, I think I would say textile art or hair tapestry. Uh, because I use a lot of embroidery, um, hand stitching, um, weaving too. So yeah, I would say textile artist. My inspiration behind this body of work is the rhythm of women when it comes to their creativity, um, in the way that they play, uh, instruments, in the way that they carry themselves, um, in the way that they do each other's hair or they do hair. I think it's the rhythm um, that they do things. And I often think that that rhythm just brings balance, you know, into this world because women are spiritual beings. So I just wanted to highlight that. And I also wanted to celebrate myself uh, for the work that I do, celebrate the women that have supported me um, throughout my journey, because I believe that as an individual, you need people along the way. I don't think that you can survive on your own. And um, I just wanted to celebrate the rhythm of women in the way that they do things uh, in a creative way. Art plays a major role in culture and history, basically just merging culture and history together. 
um, because as much as art is beautiful, I feel like it needs to be educational uh, because that's the closest thing uh, to human engagement, especially for people that can't read and write. Um, art can be their form of education and to learn more about um, themselves or just to learn more about anything in general. So I think it's very vital for artists to do research and to merge culture and history so that they can educate people um, so that art is just more than just, uh, you know, a beautiful art piece, but it's more educational. How my work recontextualize historical narratives through the current lens is I'm showcasing that hair can take up space in a room, in a gallery, in anywhere where, you know, the space <laughs> uh, outside of someone's head. Uh, because I think our historical narratives have always seen how um, our ancestors have worn their hair or done different hairstyles on their head. But now I'm recontextualizing that and um, showing people that actually hair is art that can live in your home or in your space. And I'm just showing how hair tapestry can take up space in any way. Just to remind people that hair is your canvas. The reason why I chose those things is because I just feel like our culture or our African culture is not highlighted enough. I feel like we are losing ourselves more and more. And I just wanted to remember who we are and to educate people or to remind people not to forget who we are because hair is used as a language to communicate um, anything that we want to put out there. So I'm using hair as a tool to communicate our history um, and, and to show our excellency, you know, of who we are as Africans so that we remember who we are and to teach the next generation that's following up. Turning point uh, in my career so far, honestly, I've had a few, but I think when I was given an opportunity to have a solo exhibition, uh, that was the turning point because I feel like I kind of manifested it. Um, I wanted to move my hair artistry into a gagging space, and I didn't know how I was going to merge hair and art. Uh, but then when I started like weaving it um, and creating like tapestry pieces and to be given it an opportunity from just one artwork that I created, um, that was a tipping point and that showed that there is interest and what I'm doing is valid. My favorite artwork, um, I think I'll have to say it is the Kosa woman playing Wadi, uh, mainly because I'm Kosa and I didn't know about this part of history of um, women playing or had the instrument. Um, I learned a lot that it was mainly played by married women, usually at night, you know, to play to their family, to their kids. Um, so when I was thinking about this body of work, I kind of didn't have an idea, but this art piece basically just directed everything else that came afterwards because I was just interested in how women used music as a spiritual tool um, especially because like with the Uadi I read that women used to play it for pregnant women if the baby couldn't turn then they would just play Uadi so basically using the frequencies of the music instrument to help the baby to turn and for me that was just mind-blowing and it's only now that I find out about it and I even asked um, my family and my friend that uh, um, that was raised in the Eastern Cape about this and she didn't even know about this part of the history um, so those are the moments that inspire me to tell people about this important part of history and who we are and to share that with 
every culture that doesn't know um, about what Hosada people uh, are doing or used to do. Success means to me, um, I guess I'll have to say finishing something that I've started because during that journey, there's so many challenges that you come across and um, sometimes you don't get to the finish line. So I guess for me is when I'm done with everything that I started, then that's success to me. How do I feel being labeled a female artist or an African artist? Um, I don't think that has affected me that much. I don't really pay attention to labels that much because they often change all the time. Um, I think I'll have a problem if I'm labeled something that I'm not, but because I'm female and I'm African, they, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. But if then I'm labeled something that I'm not, or maybe it's far off uh, what I represent, then maybe I'll have a problem, but I don't have a problem with it. As a young artist, um, I have learned that you need to know who you are. I think it's very important to have a foundation, firstly, of who you are, you know, from a cultural perspective, from a global perspective, because that knowledge will really help you to move forward or will really help you with your ideas or your inspiration. Um, it's very important to have a good foundation because it gives you confidence, it gives you character. You share a piece of you that is so important and that is so unique to you. And another thing that I've learned is that I, I need to be consistent and just be prepared really for anything, which means that I need to be creative every day, but also get some rest in between. But I think it's very important to be prepared for any opportunities that might uh, come through. My greatest artistic influence, I think it'll be, hmm, I think African art in a sense that I like how um, women do the African craftsmanship when it comes to weaving, uh, doing hair, uh, the, the Bantu symbol writing on their houses. I think just like the African expression um, I think people call it like the African aesthetic, which just means the artistic expression of um, African art. The most challenging part of creating these works um, was definitely time. <laughs> My work takes a lot of time and it requires a lot of patience. It's something that I can't get used to it um, in a sense that every work is different. So sometimes I would be like, okay, in my head, uh, I would think that I would finish it quickly um, only to find out that no, it takes time because of the details that go into it. Um, and the easiest, I, I guess, <laughs> drawing your idea is the easiest part because it's just easy, you know, like you can just think of anything, you just draw it in, um, not thinking about the details that it's going to take a lot of time. So I think drawing the work, uh, seeing the art line and um, having that idea is the easiest part. But yeah, the most challenging is the real thing. We have to, you know, um, soul by hand each and every little detail. The impact that I want people to, you know, take away from my work is the versatility of creativity in general um, and not to limit your creativity, uh, that there's so much that you can do um, and just to be proud of being African.